at least most of them. Sorry. So uh, today, for me personally, focus is really to find the right grapes. They are growing perfectly at the spot where they where where you are without irrigation. So dry farming for us is key. Really, you know, to find the right variety for the spot where it grows just as its perfection. And I know Sauvignon Blanc, of course, is not the typical grape variety from Tuscany, but where we do grow it, it really matures extremely well. Next wine, we go, of course, Chianti Classico and Tuscany as itself is uh, still more famous for its red wine. And that's also, of course, also true for Bancaya. So the next wines are, of course, all red wines. And the first one is um, Tre 2020. Tre is um, the Italian word for free. And we call this wine Tre because it is a blend of three grapes, Sanchevese, Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. And Brancaia as a state, we do have actually three different spots in Tuscany. Two of them are located in Chianti Classico, so Castellina and Chianti, as well as Rada and Chianti. And then we have the third spot at the coast, what we call Maremma. And the tray is a blend of those three spots. So three great varieties, three spots. Uh, it's an IGT or what you mostly in English call a super Tuscan. As for Brancaia, this is our entry level. Uh, why we probably prefer to call it a baby super Tuscan. We have a, a serious red wine, beautiful structure. Uh, quite a nice uh, body, smooth tannins, and then in the end, the beautiful freshness. So all what you are actually looking for, for a red wine, but without being too complicated. So it's wine you can drink uh, and uh, with food, without food, you can actually also drink it a bit cooler in summer. Uh, it's just super nice, charming from the coast as well, the freshness and acidity from the Chianti Classico region. I love that. I love the um, barnyardy chewiness about the wine. It's very round and circular in the mid-palate. And yes, I was kind of leaning into references to Burgundy when I, when I tasted it. And I'm so glad you recommended it that we put it in ice and chill it down in the summertime. I think that's a, a, great, a, great, a great way to approach it. So on to the Chiatis, uh, if we can. For the Chianti Classicos, um, yeah. you have, actually, you have to know that Chianti Classico is a is as a wine region, it's a big wine region, okay? So you have a huge diversity whenever you drink a Chianti Classico, it can be not, I don't want to say everything, but you will find very different kind of Chianti Classicos. And this diversity from a geographic point of view is even bigger as it is very hilly. So you have a lot of small hills, which makes the microclimate very different. Um, with, the, with the Chianti Classicos you are tasting today, uh, Robert, you have to help me. If it's the, is it the Reserva or the Chianti Classico Anata you have? Um, it's the Chianti Classico Reserva, sorry, 18. I didn't put okay. Reserva okay. in the notes. And then the Gran Selezione. Uh, Gran Selezione. So you have two Chianti Classicos which want to show somehow uh, a little bit, a little piece of the huge diversity we have in this beautiful region. So with the Chianti Classico Reserva, we do blend the most what we are allowed to, okay? So a Chianti Classico has to be today at least 80% Sanchevese, but it can be also 100%. And yeah. I really would like to underline this is quite new, okay? So a, a, a traditional Chianti Classico, so till 96, a Chianti Classico was a blend of at least three different red grapes and white grapes. So today we can make a beautiful 100% Sanchevese and Colic Chianti Classico. But again, the Reserva is a blend. So there we do blend the maximum what we are allowed. That means it's 80 Sanchevese and 20 Merlot. And you will have in the mouth and also in the beginning of the, uh, when you smell it, you will have all the focus on the Sanchevese. And then uh, later on in the mouth, it will be a bit smoother, a bit rounder, and that comes from the Merlot grape. The wine does mature 16 months in small barrels. The Sanchevese in Tono, so 500 liter, and the Merlot in Boric. Um, to compare 18 and 19, I'd say that um, with 19, there's, there's, sorry guys, with 19, there's a little bit more of structure and elevation. Um, there's something really architecturally quite, high in terms of the way the mid palette is developed. Uh, they're very different in style. So aside from the vintage difference, 
the content of the wine is the same, the location is different, the terroir is different. For the Grand Selezione afterwards? Yeah, yeah. No, the Grand Selezione is um, is a poor Sanchevese. So you go from a bland wine to a poor Sanchevese. Right. And on plus, uh, that's uh, the Grand Selezione 19 is a single vineyard wine. This is right. a vineyard um, which is part of the first pot my parents purchased in, in 81. And in 81, this was the only vineyard we kept because it was so beautiful, the quality, not beautiful, unfortunately, as a shape, but beautiful as quality of grapes. Uh, so we kept it. And then unfortunately, in 95, there were so little uh, wines left that we, we decided to, to, to rip it out. And uh, as always, if you do replant, you have to keep a vineyard uh, without any plants for about two years. We left it till 99. So in 99, we replanted this beautiful vineyard in Castellina and Chianti, and it took us 20 years. So 2019 is after 20 years of replanting. It took us 20 years to be back to the quality we had once. This gives you a bit of an idea how, how long uh, it takes in, in our profession to achieve the quality we are actually looking for. Then on to the Elytria 18 and 19. I'm very excited to compare those two, if we can. Elytria, we move to the coast. So just quickly, the Chianti Classico region is in the countryside. So if you compare Chianti Classico to the coast in the Chianti Classico region, you have to be careful to achieve the perfect ripeness. At the coast, you have to be careful to not overripe the fruit, okay? If you want to drink wine with fruit, you need always a certain acidity, which cleans out your mouth, which gives you a beautiful backbone. So in the, at the coast, we have to be very attentive to not overripe. Ilatria is a super Toscan, and both vintages are a blend of 40% Petit Verdot, 40 Cabernet Sauvignon, and 20 Cabernet Franc. They do mature 18 uh, months in Boric, about half of them you have used. After the 18 months, we will taste through each single Boric, just to be sure that the quality is the one we are looking for, and only then the wine will be blended. And as a plan, we do mature it for other three months in a concrete tank. This is, by the way, also true for the Grand Selezione and for the last one you will taste in blue. Uh, the vintage is uh, 18, uh, if you compare it to 19, was a little bit less warm, which of course is for the Maremma a very good thing. That means we have a little bit more, uh, a little bit more rain in a region where we hardly ever have rain. Uh, I think, but the I, think tonight, I just wanted to say tonight with the, the 19, again, there's that increased focus that if you're comparing the Chianti's, I noticed the same kind of thing. There's just a beautiful length and structure to 19. And maybe it tastes like a little bit more precision in, in, in the wine just tonight anyway. Uh, at the way it's presented. Robert, I see you very well know, and I guess also, also our guests, Every yeah. bottle and every moment of her own life, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes very annoying, but generally speaking, I would say this is one of the beauty about wine. Uh, uh, fair enough. Um, okay, then maybe let's uh, move to the Il Bleu next, if we can. Sure, Il Bleu. And if you like try it from our point of view, is our top wine from the coast. Il Bleu is our uh, top wine from the Chianti Classica region. It's again super Toscan. So all the great for a blue coming from the Chianti Classica region, it's a blend uh, with the vintage 2019 of 80% Merlot, so mainly Merlot, 10% uh, Sanchevese, 10% Cabernet Sauvignon. The aging very similar to La Traia, so 18 months in Boric. There is a bit more new oak in a blue than in La Traia. The focus on this wine, as I just mentioned, is from the Merlot grape, and we use only the Merlot grape from our Rada in Chianti estate, which is a bit higher uh, as the Castellina estate we have. The soil is a bit poor, so we can uh, achieve a complexity, a ripeness in the Merlot, which is, from our point of view, absolutely outstanding. By the way, Il Blue uh, is, is with the wine that put us on, on let's say, or put it us together with other very important wineries. It's a wine we're producing since a bit more than 30 years. Uh, it, it's, it's was let, let's say our first 
top wine, top product, which is always uh, rated also pretty high, and which also goes together with the history of our label, which is always, as you may see in your room, always the same label. So it's always the square. And it was designed by my father for years ago, which was at that time uh, quite unique. Today, of course, we have a lot of modern labels, but Brancaya label is still quite unique. Um, I have some questions from the people who couldn't get in tonight. And there's lots of them. There's, there's yeah. almost as many people in the waiting list hoping desperately for, to, for COVID to strike than there were people who actually got seats. Um, so maybe if I could ask you some of the questions um, that, uh, from, the, from the people who couldn't come. Uh, and then maybe uh, somebody else might have some other questions. The first one was Sauvignon Blanc. I've covered it already. Somebody was asking how you would define your Sauvignon Blanc in the European context. And I think we've covered that. What are your thoughts of 2021 and 2022 as vintages? We're starting to see, I think the thought process behind the question is we're starting to see ratings coming in from France for the entrepreneurs. Um, and they're not looking particularly positive for 21, maybe 22 a little bit better than 21. And I'm wondering how you compare Tuscany 21, 22. Um, well, actually, both of them have had uh, some 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 difficult issues, but I want to underline sometimes a difficult issue can make a wine even more interesting because it gives a bit more character to it. OK, uh -huh. but also it, it also when we do have some time, sometimes a bit to struggle, you know, to fight even more to achieve something, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the result can be even more interesting. And that can be very similar to uh, with wine. Uh, we had um, in, in both vintages actually some late frost issues, but not too heavy. Um, and um, 22 was definitely much warmer than 21. So from yeah. our point of view, I would say um, probably 21 uh, will be better than the 22. But I have to say that our nature, our vineyards managed the 22, which was for Tuscany very warm till, uh, till mid of August, uh, extremely well. And then mid of August, the weather changed and it became actually quite cool nights. And this is now fundamental because uh, mid August, till mid-October, we will have actually the last period of ripeness of the fruit. And in 22, this part of the season was not hot. So the wines are actually astonishingly fresh and fresh. fruity. Okay. Right. So yeah. uh, you will have somehow even more warmer flavors in the 21 than in the 22, which uh, okay. is probably, especially for who was in Europe in 22, a little bit strange because in, in 22 in Europe, it was all over extremely warm and people will remind the vintage as a warm vintage. I remember during one of our COVID tastings online, you put me in my place very, very clearly when we were talking about 2016 at the time. And I've used this story very often since then, when you said to me that uh, it's not the easy vintages that are interesting, it's the difficult ones. Uh, and the point you were making was, it's in the times when the, when the vintages are challenging that the real talent of the winemaker is brought to the fore. And it's something that um, I carry with me now after all the years of <laughs> our tasting together. So thank you for that. Um, there's a, there was a question about ratings inflation. Do you, are you, I mean, you guys are enjoying an, a, an incredible trajectory of billion, brilliant ratings. I and mean, the wines we're looking at tonight are 95s, 96s, 97s. Do you worry about the, the upward trajectory of, of, of so many of the wine critics. Do you have an opinion on that or do you roll with it as, 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 as they publish? Well, I, I just mentioned before the Grand Selezione, it took us 20 years to produce this wine again, okay? Uh, so uh, producing something for somebody else just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So you have to be convinced uh, what you are doing, and it's a long-term project. Of course, it's very nice to get compliments, and if you get compliments from people who are, let's say, known in the wine industry, uh, it can be not only very nice, but it can be also, of course, very helpful. But um, this is not 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 uh, in our mind when we are doing our works in the vineyards or when we do work in the cellar. Our, 
our mindset is really to do the best what we can do. And, and, and this is, of course, always a very personal journey. And so far, Brancaya was uh, most of the time, at least, very lucky, uh, which is, of course, again, a nice compliment, but it's not in our focus. And so I guess the, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. So uh, before we sit down and have some, uh, some Tuscan food, are there any more questions from anybody before we say goodbye to Barbara? It's lunchtime there, so I'm sure you must be getting hungry. <laughs> any questions from the floor? No. Okay. Well, Bob, uh, yeah. 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 Good. 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 Just generalize the manuals versus the rats, for example. In terms of style? In terms of style. Right. How do you feel about how, contrasting the two? Uh, uh, Robert, you have to tell me. Sure. So the question, the question from Ashley was, how would you compare and contrast Italian Merlot to possibly the right bank of Bordeaux in terms of their expression of Merlot? as a style um well i would i would say um Tosca is much too big as a region just to to explain it that easily and uh, i would therefore prefer to answer it only just for our merlot instead yeah. for other merlots it's it's really believe me microclima is a big thing uh, before I answer the question, I just want to give you an idea. We have an estate in Rodan County and we have another one in Castellina County. It's only 10 kilometers between them, okay? And we had 10 days ago, we had a very heavy rainfall in Rodan County with 90 millimeters, and we didn't have any rain in Castellina County. That's crazy. Okay, yeah. so... Believe me, microclimate is a big thing. So answering for whole Tuscany, uh, this question is just not serious. Um, I uh, I would say um, that my 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 answering is a bit bit complex because it has also to do how old your wines are. I really experienced in the last twenty five years as older a wine is, as more interesting is the fruit. And generally speaking, of course, the fruits in, in Tuscany, mellow fruits are still younger. And we are, let's say, one of the lucky ones. So our average age uh, from, from the mellow grape is now 30 years old. And I really can see every year as more interesting as gets. Uh, so I would say today uh, it's probably a bit fuller. OK, so you will have a, a similar elegance, but probably it's a bit longer, a bit fuller. Uh, uh, but also there, you know, it's not that I do taste those uh, two Merlots every day side by side. So it could be, could be that I'm wrong. Perfecto. All right. Thank you so much, Barbara. And um, hope to see you in Italy sometime this year. Um, be it was my pleasure. And of course, uh, it goes to everybody here tonight. Whoever does have the chance to come to Tuscany uh, is more than welcome to visit us. Or if you have friends, uh, or, or whatever, a family, whoever you want to send over, we love to have people at our estate. Thank you so much. Uh, have a good weekend, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Good night. Bye-bye. Enjoy your dinner.